This is One on One. Mark Levinson is the director of Particle Fever. You look at these scientists, right? And one of the things you were just saying before we get on the air is that people are fascinated when they look at these scientists and they say, wow, they're just like <laughs> normal people. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that was the amazing reaction we had just even to initially to just showing little test screenings. And you're a scientist. I am a scientist. And I you was seem pretty normal. <laughs> right. Uh, I hope so. Uh, yeah. Although I moved from science into film, so, uh, but you know, I don't think that goes away. What is the deal with the God particle? With the Boggs, excuse me, the, Hig the Higgs boson. boson. The Higgs boson. The God particle. I'm, as, by the way, we do a lot of shows here at Lincoln Center, but this, I kept reading over the notes saying, I'm trying to understand this. It's about physics, which is not my area of expertise trying to understand why it's so special. Why is this God particle so special? Well, I think it's been, it's been something that has been predicted for 50 years, and we have this incredibly successful theory of nature. I mean, it basically describes everything we see on Earth. I mean, everything, you know, uh, all the normal phenomena, mm. um, in terms of a certain set of basic fundamental particles. Um, things that we know, like electrons, uh, something called quarks, and other exotic particles, but, but you know, a, a very small set of them, and a certain set of forces. But in order for the theory to work, there's one thing that, at the center of it that was missing, um, that was actually ne necessary to understand why these particles, at some early point in the universe, actually uh, formed matter, why they, they acquired mass, mm. and why that allowed atoms to form, and then molecules, and planets, and I mean, uh, everything else that allowed us to form. So, so in, in terms of the, you know, why we're here question, it's essential. Also, just for our mathematics, it's really absolutely critical. And uh, it was predicted that this Higgs particle, I mean, really, the more fundamental thing is called a Higgs field, that this thing is what did it. And it was predicted by Peter Higgs and several other physicists um, who are actually, well, Peter Higgs and... That's why it's named that. That's named after Peter Higgs. There are several others. In fact, the Nobel Prize mm. in a couple of weeks is going to Peter Higgs and uh, Francois Angler, who was one of, the one, of the other people, scientists. one of the other scientists. He worked with another person named Rout, who unfortunately died before he got it. But these people had theorized it, and they've been waiting for 50 years to see. And the, you know, without it, it, it was a mystery, because why this theory could be so successful and explain everything, but we could not find this thing at the center of it was very, very critical. But what's interesting is that while the science, the physics, the process is fascinating, the scientists themselves, okay, you do this film, it's about them as people. How comfortable are they being themselves on film? Oh, they were actually extremely comfortable, um, I'd say. I mean, in fact, you know, the idea for the film came from a physicist. Uh, David Kaplan is my partner. Right. He's a physicist. He, he, in fact, saw what was going on in the field and had this sense that something was going to happen and this would be an interesting story, that they, they, they are human. But you didn't, know what, you didn't know how it was going to end. We absolutely didn't know how it was going to end, in fact. Uh, that... It was a classic documentary. We started, uh, you know, I started shooting in 2008 when they first did some initial tests at CERN. It's, this is where it's over at, in Geneva, outside of Geneva, the, the Large Hadron Collider. Mm. That's the name of the uh, machine that is taking these particles and accelerating them around at, at uh, you know, near the speed of light and then banging them into each other at four points to see what comes out. And so, um, you know, we knew that this was going to be a unique moment when this turned on. That is looking at a cross section of the uh, Atlas detector. So, the what? It's called the Atlas detector. Do you realize you guys have an entire vernacular vocabulary we don't understand? You know, I not only understand that, that that's true, but that became really one of the critical things for us in making the film, is that we, we, in some sense, had to overcome that, and we had to come up with a vocabulary and say that these, this is our vocabulary for the film, and we're going to define these terms and, you know, and not these other ones, and then hopefully an audience will follow it. So you're, you're absolutely right, and that is one of the things I think, do, is, you know, does um, prevent some people from 
absolutely being able to follow this. You have to decode this. We have to decode it, yes. But it doesn't take a lot. I mean, you know, it just takes a little care and uh, understanding of what are the critical things to let people grasp onto things. And the central themes that the rest of us who are not scientifically um, trained or even inclined, that should cause us to say, hey, this is important. We need to understand this because it's about our world. Those themes are? Well, why are we here? I mean, uh, oh, other than that, about, you know, <laughs> something very simple. So I think, you know, people that question that and understand, want to know why we're here, what is our place in the world? This is, this is, uh, they, these are the fundamental questions that everybody asks, scientists or non-scientists alike. I mean, I think, you know, many people are interested in that, and uh, and this film really tries to you know, put it into a context that anybody can understand. It's really, the story ended up being an absolutely dramatic, suspenseful story where you're following these characters. And so I think it- These aren't characters, just, they're real people. They are people, but you know, it's interesting in Do they become characters? Oh, absolutely. Are they acting at all? They're not really acting. So they're not no. characters. Well, you know, uh, we, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I actually came from a, after I went out of physics, I, I went into the narrative fiction world and uh, my editor is a very famous editor, Walter Murch, who also works on that. And we, we referred to them as characters. We felt, you know, in the end, we, you know, you're, you're talking about them like characters. And, you know, to back, back to your original question, no, they were all very, very uh, interested. And the, and the fact is they are so uh, involved with what they're doing. You know, the first time you put a mic on them or something like yeah. that, there's a little bit of self-consciousness. Did they forget? They forget, they absolutely forget. And I, I don't know that I could be as oblivious. I mean, by the end, you know, my, my camera person, I mean, they, they would be just sitting there working at the board and she'd be moving around them and, and you know, I'd find that distracting, but luckily they didn't. And, and of course, they get so caught up in things. I and mean, we were filming some dramatic moments when things were actually happening and they, you know, forget about it. Also, you know, I was around them for five years. So at a certain You point, like these just, people. I really and I really like these people, and these I hope that comes people, through. I hope people. it comes through. Yes. No. I mean, they're they're all they're all fantastic. And the uh, film is called Particle Fever. It's called Particle Fever, and it's going to be opening uh, March fifth at the Film Forum in New York. We wish you uh, nothing but the best, Mark Levinson, director of uh, a movie called Particle Fever, and it's about oh that little thing. Why are we here? <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. We'll be back right after this from the Tisch WNET studios right here in Lincoln Center. It's really amazing. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Barnabas Health, Berkeley College, the law firm of Gibbons PC, United Water, Wells Fargo, Verizon Communications, and by New Jersey Natural Gas, Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by the Adler Aphasia Center.